بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وقدوتنا وقائدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما أخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمنا بنور الفهم وأنم علينا يا عظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قول أما بعد All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and peace be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I testify that there is no God except Allah Almighty and I testify that Muhammad is the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah. My brothers and sisters, here we are again in this blessed place, in a blessed gathering, a gathering of the angels, a gathering in which will take us a straight way to the paradise, as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَنْ سَلَكَ طَرِيقًا يَلْتَمِسُ فِيهِ عِلْمًا سَهَّلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ بِهِ طَرِيقًا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ the Prophet says that whoever seeks a path of knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make an easy path for them to the paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the paradise. And with tonight's topic, in which I believe it's an important topic to be addressed, an important topic to be clarified, especially amongst those who are much more involved than others, which are the youth. And the topic that we'll be talking about tonight, and a question that's in the mind of many people, what's the ruling of music in Islam? What's the ruling of music in Islam? And inshallah, within tonight, we'll try and cover different aspects on that topic, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the correct understanding in which takes us to his pleasure and takes us to the way in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to follow the path of the Quran and the Sunnah. Music, it's something that exists from many, many centuries ago. So it's not something that existed at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nor that it existed after the time of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, it's mentioned they exist from the time of the children of Adam alayhi salam. It existed from the time of the children of Adam alayhi salam, in which they had their different musical instruments for them to entertain themselves with. And obviously people listen to music because of the fact that they want to entertain themselves and maybe some feel this emotional feelings or some feel this relaxation, or some feel more calm when they listen to music. Different types and different ways and different, uh, different needs of people or different uh, ways that people do listen to music or different thoughts they might have towards music. But keep in mind, what we're going to talk about tonight and the opinion of the scholars on music, okay, is not the music that we have these days. This difference between the music that we see coming up these days with the different you know, musicians and singers and the, the different types of uh, songs they come up with than the previous times. You find that these days the musics are more involved with more corruption, more evilness, more wrong words, you know, more foolish words than the previous uh, musicians and singers. Before, before, this, before this century, most of the music was more involved around poetry and poems. More of poetry and poems. Nothing to do with the music that we have these days. And the reason I mention this, so we could understand the opinion of the scholars and why some scholars agreed to say music is permissible, when they said it is permissible, they're not talking about such music that we have these days. I would not believe or imagine any scholar will accept 
such music that we have these days or such musical instruments that do take place like the musical instruments that we have these days and I don't know, alhamdulillah, I'm not involved into those things and I don't know what uh, types and different types of musical instruments and songs and the type of singers they might have but this is something that we, يعني, as I mentioned, different to the previous uh, uh, different to the previous eras, different to the previous centuries or what the scholars had their opinion based on. Okay, already getting interrupted by a Toyota QZJ396. Please remove your car. Toyota QZJ396. Now, so what's the ruling of Islam on music? On that, we need to differentiate between two things. Musical instruments and singing. Musical instruments and singing. So what's the difference between those two? You could sing without musical instruments. Singing is just a voice. Just a voice. Okay. Has nothing to do with the musical instruments. And then you could also have musical instruments without singing. And most of the music these days is combined between musical instruments and singing. And the reason we need to differentiate between singing and the musical instruments is because we need to also understand what's the ruling of Nasheed. Nasheed, which is the musical, which is the Islamic songs that a lot of uh, Muslim singers sing. So what's the ruling on that? So we need to differentiate between musical instruments and singing. Singing does not mean that when you sing there's a musical instrument, such as those who make Anashid. A lot of those who make Anashid do Anashid and sing Islamic songs, sing Islamic Anashid without any musical instruments involved. Because of that, the scholars differentiate between singing and between musical instruments and singing with musical instruments. Where the problem is, is within the musical instruments. The problem is within the musical instruments. With singing, talking about singing, and we're just talking about someone who sings with a nice voice and has nothing to do with a musical instrument. Okay, with singing, the best answer was given by Imam Shafi'i. He said, Hasanuhu Hasan wa Sayyiuhu Sayyid. When Imam Shafi'i was asked about singing, he said, the good out of the singing is good and the bad is bad. Which means, if someone sings with his own voice, no musical instruments, no musical instruments at all, just sings with their own voice and they have a nice voice like how we have a lot of murshideen who make very nice inshad. And inshad means an Islamic song. And they make inshad, they sing Islamic songs based on Islamic poetry or based on Islamic themes and so on. Imam Shafi'i says, Hassan wa Hassan, the good of it is good and the bad of it is bad. Which means it all goes back to the words that are used in singing. If someone sings without musical instrument, it is permissible as long as what this person is singing is not haram. He's not mentioning haram things. He's not mentioning evil things. He's not encouraging for the haram. He's not encouraging for the evilness. He's not encouraging for the wrong deed. He's not encouraging for the wrongdoings. He's singing not Islamic songs in Shad, based on poetry. And that something existed at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where many Sahaba were poets. Many Sahaba were poets, especially poems and poetry was a very common thing amongst the Arab. And they used to compete between one another who could write the best of poetry. And the Arabic poetry is not like the English or any other language poetry. The Arabic poetry is a very, very deep poetry. You know, there is a, it's a very deep poetry and uh, needs a lot of studies and it needs a lot of deep grammar. The Prophet Muhammad sallam, had poets such as Hassan bin Thabit and other companions. And in many narrations, a lot of the companions came and sang poems to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam listened to it. Which means the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam accepted, he accepted the singing of Sahaba, okay? He accepted the singing of Sahaba of poems. But when we say singing here, we're not saying with music. Musical instruments is a different topic that we'll be talking about right now. 
We are talking about, we are talking about someone who sings without musical instruments, such as poems and poetry and inshad. This is something permissible, and the best of saying again is what Imam Shafi'i said, the good words out of it is good, and the bad words out of it is bad. When it comes to singing without musical instrument, it all goes back to the words that this person is singing. If they are good and acceptable words, then it's acceptable. Even though that he is singing something that's not Islamic. Someone is singing a song about a tree. Someone is singing a song about, a, about the moon and the sun. Okay? Someone is singing a song about this world. Even though it's not Islamic, as long as the words are not foolish words, not evil words, as long as the words do not encourage for corruption, then singing without musical instruments is permissible as long as the words that this person is singing are not evil words or haram words or words that encourage for evilness or words that encourage for the haram. Now, we come to the other topic, which is musical instruments. And this is where the major topic that involves, uh, uh, involves a lot of the music these days. Okay, people get attracted to the musical instruments. And we know music within itself is a deep knowledge. Okay, when I say a deep knowledge, I don't say it's an acceptable knowledge, but music itself is a very deep knowledge and it's got a long history. Music exists and musical instruments exist for centuries. Now, with all the different types of musical instruments, Okay, and we know there's a lot of types of musical instruments and year by year, you know, the musical industry just gets developed and the musical instruments also, and it is more technology based on the musical instruments and every year you hear about this and that. Alhamdulillah, myself, I'm not involved into this, but this is the world that we live in and this is what we read in the newspapers and this is something that, you know, we experience around us. We are talking about the musical instruments in all kinds. What's the ruling? of the musical instruments. What's the ruling of using musical instruments? And of course, using them, it's also applying what's the ruling of listening to musical instruments? What's the ruling of me listening to musical instruments? Here we have to say something that this is something that the scholars did disagree over. Did disagree over, okay? And the reason they disagreed over is their understanding to the text of the Quran Karim and to the text of the Hadith. But there's one thing we need to mention, that the vast majority, the vast majority, without a dispute, are on the opinion that music or musical instruments are haram. This is the vast majority, without a dispute. The dispute in this mas'ala is amongst a small number of scholars. A small number of scholars. And the reason I mention this, maybe someone will say, but Sheikh, what don't you just say it's haram and don't mention the other opinion? We cannot ignore great scholars who mention the permissibility of uh, this issue. If we're going to ignore them, that means we're ignoring their knowledge and we should not be taking anything from them. But at the end of the day, they made their ishtihad. They made their personal reasoning and opinion. And if they were right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them two rewards. And if they were wrong, Allah azza wa will give them one reward. Because we are talking about great scholars such as Imam Abu Hamid al-Ghazali who said, you know, some musical instruments are permissible. We are talking about Ibn Hazm. And Ibn Hazm is one of the greatest scholars that history had ever produced. And he also was on the opinion, and not only was on the opinion, he was heavily involved into it. He used to like it himself. But that does not give us an excuse to follow that path. Here we're talking about, we are talking about the vast majority. The vast majority without any challenge and dispute. The vast majority of scholars that music is haram. And musical instruments are haram. The vast majority, okay, from the salaf, from the, from, uh, the salaf, from our predecessors, are on the opinion that musical instruments are haram. On this topic also, it's not been narrated from any of the salaf that musical instruments are permissible. So the most of the Salaf, if not all the Salaf, they are on the opinion that musical instruments are haram. Based on what? And this is where you come and ask, okay, you're saying that music is haram, musical instruments are haram. We understand that the vast majority of scholars say that musical instruments and using musical instruments, listening to musical instruments are haram. This is something that there's no dispute about. Then what's your dalil? Okay? 
And of course, we cannot say anything that's halal or haram without a dalil. Without a dalil. Especially to say haram. If you want to say something is haram, you have to bring a dalil. Okay, because everything originally is halal. Everything is halal. Until the sharia says if it's haram or not. Al-aslu fil ashya' libaha. Everything is halal. Everything originally is halal. Including riba, halal. Theft, halal. All this was halal. Until the sharia came and then said, riba is haram. Theft is haram. Zina is haram. Eating pork is haram. Drinking wine is haram. So before the sharia says it's haram, what's its original ruling? Halal. So everything on its original ruling, it's always halal until the sharia comes and says it's haram. Now someone will come and grab and cut and paste this lecture and say the sheikh says theft is halal. <laughs> Drinking wine is halal. Okay? People will do that. Anyway, may Allah Azza wa guide us and guide them. Okay? But this is the Islamic ruling. Al-aslu fil ashya' li baha. Everything is originally halal until the sharia comes and says this is haram, this is haram, this is haram as it did with everything else haram. So the things that the sharia did not say about it's haram. What's the ruling of it? Halal. So if the sharia didn't say about eating beef meat, haram, that means it's halal. If the sharia didn't say driving cars is haram, that means what? It's halal. If the sharia didn't say that music is haram, what does it mean? It's halal. If the sharia didn't say that, what does that mean? It means it's halal. Now, same thing, the music is one of the things that originally it's halal until the sharia came and said it's haram. So to base any, to base uh, the ruling of haram on any, on any matter, on any, on, on, any, on any deed, on anything, then you must provide a dalil. So what's the dalil? What's the evidence that music is haram? Since we are talking about the vast number of scholars, okay, the vast number of scholars, especially from the Salaf and the past, that are on the opinion that listening to music is haram. They start and begin with the verse in Surah Luqman where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَرِي لَهُوَ الْحَدِيثِ لِيُضِلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمِ وَيَتَّخِذَهَا هُزُوَا أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ مُّهِينٌ And amongst people who buy the foolish, the foolish talk, buy the foolish words, لِيُضِلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمِ To misguide people without any knowledge, وَيَتَّخِذَهَا هُزُوَا and to take the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to neglect or to mock the path of Allah azza wa jalla through buying these foolish words and foolish talk. Uh, uh, for those type of people who do such an action, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish them a severe punishment. Ibn Abbas, who is one of the great scholars of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Huwa al ghina Okay, he said, Huwa al ghina And ghina is an Arabic word that refers to singing especially with music. Al-Ghina is singing with music. Al-Ghina is singing with music, music or singing foolish songs. Mujahid, who is also from the Tabi'een, he said, Allahu, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is referring to Allahu, the foolish actions and the evil deeds, or the foolish uh, uh, actions and foolish sayings, is at tabl the drums. And this is from the Salaf. Mujahid, uh, rahimahullah is from the Salaf. Al Hassan al Basri, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, who is also from the great Salaf, okay, and he said this verse was revealed for the Mazamir, for the flute and the evil singing. So, this is the understanding of whom? We are talking about Abdullah ibn Abbas, who is a great companion, and not only a great companion, he is the one that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, O oh Allah, O oh Allah, faqihu fi din increase his knowledge in the religion and teach him the interpretation of the Quran al-Kareem. So Abdullah ibn Abbas' opinion on this verse that the lahu, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about those people who buy this foolish talk and foolish deed, what is it? He said he is referring to al-ghina, which is evil singing involving music. And Mujahid is also from the great Tabi'een. He said, al-lahu he is the drums. And Al Hassan al Basri, also another great Tabi'i, he said, Here is Al Ghina wal Mazamir. Here is talking, Allah Azza was talking about the evil singing, okay, or songs involving music and the flute. 
Okay, because amongst the very common musical instruments that the Arabs have is the flute. Naam. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he uses this dalil and he says that, that this is enough of a dalil to hear from the Sahaba and the Tabi'een, their interpretation and their understanding to the word lahu referring in this verse. And he also narrates of Abdullah ibn, uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud what he mentioned about it and also Abdullah ibn Mas'ud mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the lahu here. He is talking about there is nothing else. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud when he was asked what's the lahu here and what type of the lahu is Allah Azza wa Jalla referring. He said, Wallahi alladhi la ilaha illa ghayru huwa al ghina By Allah that there is no God except him. And he made an oath. Allah is referring to the music and referring to the singing with music. And also there is a narration on Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu saying that Allah will hadith, the evil and foolish talk is the al-ghina, al-ghina which is music and singing with music. So these are opinions of whom? These are opinions of great sahaba such as Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Abdullah ibn Umar. And these are the great scholars of the Sahaba. Those three, Abdullah, they call them Al-Abadila, a plural word for Abdullah. You know, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, they are great scholars amongst the Sahaba. And that's their opinion from their understanding and interpretation of the hadith, uh, from Lahu al-Hadith in that verse, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَرِي لَهُ الْحَدِيثِ لِيُضِلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And amongst people who buy, who purchase Lahu al-Hadith, Lahu al-Hadith means the foolish talk. The foolish talk. And the foolish talk here is referring to as the music and evil singing. Of course, this is the opinions of Sahaba. And we mentioned an opinion of Tabi'een such as Mujahid and Al-Hasan al-Basri. And as long as uh, and with that, there's a chain of great Tabi'een and Tabi'i Tabi'een who are from Amongst the Salaf, such as Jabir, wa Ikrimah, wa Sa'id ibn Jubair, wa Makhul, wa Maymun, ibn Mahran, wa Amr ibn Shu'aib, and the, the rest of great Tabi'een who are on the same opinion that Lahu al-Hadith is music and evil singing involving music. So these are the opinions of whom? Of great scholars from the Sahaba, great scholars from the Tabi'een, and great scholars from the Tabi'i Tabi'een, which are our Salaf and predecessors. In their understanding towards one verse, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَرِي لَهُوَ الْحَدِيثِ لِيُدُلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And they are amongst people who will buy and purchase لَهُوَ الْحَدِيثِ The foolish talk لِيُدُلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ To misguide people from the path of Allah بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ Without knowledge وَيَتَّخِذَهَا هُزُوَا And takes it as a mockery. What did Allah Azza wa Jalla say? أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ مُهِينٌ For those people who do such, what did Allah say? لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ مُهِينٌ For those who do such, they have a severe punishment. So this is one verse that the scholars use as an evidence that music is haram. Also they use the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Isra. وَاسْتَفْسِزْ مَنْ اسْتَطَعْتَ مِنْهُمْ بِصَوْتِكَ وَأَجْلِبْ عَلَيْهِمْ بِخَيْلِكَ وَرِجْلِكَ وَشَارِكُمْ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ وَعِدْهُمْ وَمَا يَعِدْهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he addressed Ablis, لَعَنَهُ اللَّهُ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed Ablis, لَعَنَهُ اللَّهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, and try and deceive whoever you want to deceive with your voice and try and take him with your بِخَيْلِكَ يعني your soldiers وَرِجْلِكَ وَشَارِكُمْ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَمْوَالِ Try and deceive whoever you want to deceive with your voice and deceive them and deceive them as much as you want to deceive them with your army. وَشَارِكُمْ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ And be partners with them. You know, be involved with them in their world and their kids. وَعِدْهُمْ وَمَا عِدْهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا And promise them. And the only thing that you'll promise them is only deception. He, the scholars say, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, and deceive them however you want to deceive them with your voice. With whose voice? The voice of Iblis. The scholars say the voice here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is referring to the voice of Iblis. What voice of Iblis do we hear? Do you ever hear Iblis coming speaking to you? Have you ever ever experienced Iblis speaking to you? The voice of Iblis here, the voice of the shaitan, is the musical instruments. 
And this is why it says in Tafsir al Jalalain by Imam al Suyuti, he says, and with your voice, he says, Bil Ghina'i wal Mazamir, with singing and with the flutes and the musical instruments. So, this is the understanding that the scholars had from this verse, and such verse like this, Walladina la yashadun al Zura. وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّهُ مَرُّوا كِرَامَ In Surah Al-Furqan, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the believers and He said those who do not witness the false testification, وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّهُ مَرُّوا كِرَامَ And if they go past any foolish talk, they go past it with dignity and honor by not listening to it. The scholars also refer to اللَّهُ here is the musical instruments and الْغِنَاء. So here are some verses from the Quran Al-Kareem in which the Quran Al-Kareem, those verses refer to the, uh, to, uh, to the, to the singing uh, or these verses refer that to the musical instruments as being haram and that are forbidden. Now, from the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the strongest hadith amongst them all is this hadith that the scholars use that's been narrated by Imam Al-Bukhari, which he says, لَا يَكُنَنَّ مِنْ أُمَّةِ أَقْوَامِ يَسْتَحِلُّونَ الْحِرَّةِ وَالْحَرِيرَ وَالْخَمْرَ وَالْمَعَازِفِ Okay, this is hadith narrated by Imam al-Bukhari, he says, where the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, there will be, there will be people from amongst my nation in which they will permit, in which they will permit zina, al-hirra here means uh, illegal sex, wal-harir, uh, wearing silks for men, wal-khamr, Wine or alcohol any, or any intoxication. Wal-ma'azif. What's al ma'azif? Ma'azif means musical instruments. So here is very clear in the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he says, there will be people from amongst my nation where they will permit, where they will permit sex, uh, illegal sex, which is zina, adultery and fornication. Wal-harir, which is wearing silks. As we know, wearing silk is forbidden on men and it's very clear in the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so there will be people in this uh, there will be people after the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there will be a band or there will be a group of people after the time of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam that will permit adultery and fornication and they will permit wearing silk and they will permit drinking alcohol and wine and they will also permit listening to music and this is very clear. When the Prophet ﷺ is saying that there will be people after me that will permit this. And the Prophet ﷺ is talking about the evil action of those people. What does it mean? They are permitting something that is forbidden. And Nabi ﷺ is saying there will be people after me that will permit. So what would the Prophet ﷺ talk about that type of people if they were doing the right thing? So obviously the Prophet ﷺ is talking about people who are doing the wrong thing. And what wrong are they doing? First of all, they are permitting, okay? They are permitting uh, major sins or one of the major sins such as zina, al-hirra, which is zina, uh, illegal sex, such as adultery and fornication, wearing silk, drinking wine, and listening to musical instruments. Yani the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made the musical instruments on the same level as zina. The Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam, in this hadith, he made the musical instruments on the same level, on the same stage of zina. So musical instruments, that's not just a little thing. And listening to music is not just a little thing. So this is one of the hadith of uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it's been narrated by Imam al-Bukhari, which is no doubt an authentic hadith. A hadith that, uh, that the scholars had accepted, including Ibn Hazar, Ibn Salah, and Imam bin Habban, which are the great narrators of the hadith and authenticators of the hadith, and also uh, Sheikh Al Albani also authenticated this hadith. So, this hadith is an authentic hadith, and uh, no doubt there is no weakness in this hadith. And it's very clear in that hadith that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is talking about the evil action of such people that will do, in which they will permit what? Permit the musical instruments. Now, the other hadith which are narrated on that, some of them are strong and some of them are weak, but this is the strongest hadith. The one we just mentioned that's been narrated by Imam al-Bukhari is the strongest hadith in that chapter in which is very clear permitting, uh, permitting uh, musical instruments. Now, another 
uh, a hadith which uh, the scholars say it's hadith Hassan. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says, Sawtani mal'unan, sawtu mizmarin inda ni'matin wa sawtu waylin inda musibah. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam he says there are two verses in which are cursed a voice or a, a, a voice of a mizmar. A mizmar is a flute or which is a musical instrument. A flute, a sawt, mizmar and the ni'mah, the voice of a flute uh, within the time of a bounty, which is that when people listen to music in a time of relaxation and so on. Wasawtu wailin in the musiba when people start, you know, damning and cursing themselves in a moment of a musiba, in a moment of a test and affliction. So let us grab the first part. The Prophet والسلام, describes the voice of the flute, describes the voice of that musical instrument is considered to be a cursed voice, which means that musical instruments are haram. Also, another hadith that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says, Inna Allah harrama ala ummati al khamra wal maysara wal mazra wal kouba wal qaneen wa zaadani salat al wutr. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in this hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had forbidden on my nation drinking alcohol or intoxication, gambling, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continues and he says, wal kawba. Kawba is, is another term for drums. So the drum, okay, is a musical instrument which is very clearly in this hadith. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah azza wa jal had forbidden on me such musical instrument. Lastly, another hadith also been narrated by Abu Dawood عن نافع أنه قال سمع ابن عمر مزمارا قال فوضع أصبعيه على أذني وناء عن الطريق وقال لي يا نافع هل تسمع شيئا قال فقلت لا قال فرفع أصبع فرفع أصبعيه من أذني وقال كنت مع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فسمع مثل هذا فصنع هذا. Okay, this hadith is a story of Abdullah ibn Umar. Abdullah ibn Umar is one of the great companions who was with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he accompanied the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam and he learned a lot from the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam. Abdullah ibn Umar had a student from the Tabi'in, his name is Nafi' and Nafi' is the teacher of Imam Malik. One day Nafi' says I was walking with Abdullah ibn Umar and then we heard, we heard the voice or we heard the noise of a musical instrument, we heard the sound of a musical instrument of the flute. So what did Abdullah ibn Umar do? He put his, he put his uh, fingers in his ears and he blocked his ears until he kept away from the path and continued walking until he asked Nafi, oh Nafi, do you hear anything now? And are we far away from uh, listening to the musical instrument? So Nafi said, no, we are far away. So there's no longer a sound or noise of the musical instrument. So Abdullah ibn, Nafi, uh, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu he removed his fingers from his ears and he said, I did that because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam did this. I did that because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam did that. So Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he done an action that he saw the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam do when the Prophet alayhi wasallam heard the sound of a musical instrument such as the flute, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam put his uh, fingers in his ears and therefore Abdullah ibn Umar when he when he went through the same experience of the Prophet والسلام, he did the same and he told Nafi' radiallahu ta'ala anhu that I did that because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did that. So this is another hadith being narrated by Imam Abi Dawood in his Sunan narrating that uh, the, what the Prophet والسلام, did when he heard a musical instrument. From this, ahad, from this ahadith or from these ahadith that we just mentioned and from the previous verses that we just also mentioned and the interpretation of the uh, great scholars on that this is the conclusion that the scholars come out with, that listening to music is haram. Listening to music is haram. It's an evil deed. It's a sin. And they disagree amongst each other if it's a major sin or a minor sin. But at the end of the day, it is a sin. Okay? And I believe, Allahu A'lam, it's a major sin. I go with the opinion that it is a major sin based on the understanding from the Quran and based on the understanding from the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is a major sin to listen to the music and what music we're talking about, brothers and sisters. We are talking about the calm, respectful, okay, singing words, if you want to call it. And the reason I mention respectful, respectful with the current musical industry that we have these days, okay, the music back then is had a lot more respect than the music that you have these days. And the scholars were talking about the music back then. 
Though we're talking about music back then, which did not involve what you see on TV or what you hear when people put the music. This, you know, there is far, far a distance between the music back then, which is haram, and I call it a lot more respectful than the music that you have these days. And when the scholars disagreed, they disagreed on the music back then. What would they say about the music these days? When they see, you know, the, the, the devils and the demons, you know, uh, 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 you know the, the music of the devils and the demons and the singing of the devils and the demons, it's like, subhanAllah, you're in a gathering of shayateen, when they sing and when they, you know, sing some songs and that, and it's amazing. And, you know, when you go to clubs and it's like a dark area where you're just, you know, worshipping the shaytan. Believe me, I believe, you know, these clubs and, you know, the, these clubs that involve, the, 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 you know, the discos and the clubbings and that. These are just the places of worship shaytan. How we have a mosque, we worship Allah. This is the temple of the shaytan. You can worship the shaytan. And everyone that goes there will tell you, yes, it's like we are dancing or standing next to a shaytan. If not, shaytan was within us as this is how it is with Billah. And you know, there is no doubt, Ikhwani, you know, as one of the scholars, uh, when he was asked about music, you know, is music halal or haram? He said, where would you put music in? Would you put it in a good deed or a bad deed? In front of Allah, when you stand in front of Allah. Is music considered to be from the hasanat or the sayyat? Your nature tells you, there's no way you could, you know, there's no way you could put music in the hasanat. There is no way you could consider music from the good deeds. It's your fitrah, you know, go to anyone. Go to someone who doesn't even pray and tell him, you know, where do you see music? Does it fit in the hasanat or does it fit in the sayyat? Does music fit in a good deed or a bad deed? There's no one, yani, the, min, the, the worst case scenario is to say, look, probably it's not in the bad, but it doesn't fit in the good. That's definitely. Yani, that's the worst answer you ever get. If not, everyone will agree to you, you know what? No, I could see music as being, you know, in the sayyat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Azza wa Jal, he mentions about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam when he sent him, وَيُحَرِّمُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْخَبَائِثِ He described the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam as a man that will forbid the khabaith, the evil doings. Where do you fit music? You'll fit music in the khabaith. Music fits in the khabaith, fits in the evil doings, fits in the wrong doings. So therefore, my brothers and sisters, Come up with the conclusion that music is haram. No doubt, music is haram. Although there is a small number of scholars who disagree, but, you know, with all respect to those scholars and their knowledge, but, you know, the majority and the vast majority do say that music is haram, and let us stick to that. And uh, we stick to this opinion, take it and be on the safe side, which is no doubt, it is the safe side. And Allahu Alam, inshallah, it is the correct opinion because you are talking about the vast, vast, vast majority of the scholars of this ummah say that music is haram. And I do encourage anyone that's listening to music to stop listening to music. Why? Because not only music is haram, but music, as one of the uh, scholars said, it plants, it implants the hypocrisy in the heart. Music implants the hypocrisy in the heart. You know, music, subhanAllah, destroys the iman. You know, like how, you know, uh, uh, you know the turns off the iman and destroys the iman is like, uh, like how a bulldozer just destroys a building. This is what a music does. You know, a music destroys the iman. You know, it takes you about a year to build a building and then within one second it'll take you to demolish it. And that's how the music, it takes you so long, you work so hard for your iman, to build your iman, to grow your iman and then you listen to one or two songs and you find your iman had been destroyed and you find your iman had been demolished. But therefore, my brothers and sisters, let's watch out from listening to music. Music is haram, it's haram, it's haram. And there is no doubt about music being haram. Musical instruments are haram. All of them except one musical instrument, which is the deaf. One musical instrument, which is the deaf. And on the deaf, there is also, you know, the scholars, some scholars, or, you know, there is a great number of scholars who restrict the deaf only to females and only in certain uh, celebrations. And other scholars say that the deaf is open for any time, uh, for men and women, for any occasion. So there is that controversy, uh, that controversy amongst the scholars. But this is something acceptable because both have their dalil on it. Except the deaf. And when we're talking about the deaf, we are talking about the deaf without the khalkhal, which is the tambourines that are involved in it. You know? Even though that the scholars have their say on that. But with the deaf, the Prophet Muhammad you know, heard the deaf 
and it was, you know, the stuff was played in front of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. It was played by young girls. It was played by a woman in front of him. It was played by other female sahabiyat. And uh, there is no narration that mentions it was played by men. But because it was played by females, some scholars say, you know, it's only restricted to females. And uh, other scholars say, since a female played it, then it's allowed for a male. So, and it just the that within itself, it's a controversial topic among the scholars, where some say it's open for both men and women at any time. And some say, no, it's only for women. And it's only in certain times, such as weddings, such as uh, engagements, such as a moment of celebration. Uh, but I still say, you know, even though that you might take the other opinion, men can play it, it is still an acceptable opinion than taking an opinion that says all musical instruments are, uh, are permissible. So with the conclusion, my brothers and sisters, musical instruments, all musical instruments are haram. Listening to any musical instrument is haram beside the daf, okay? Singing, it's with the singing words without the musical instruments, if it's nice words and acceptable words and uh, good words, then it is acceptable. If it's bad words, evil words, then it's haram, like how you pronounce an evil word or a wrong word. Based on that, inshallah, let us fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow the path of Allah and His Messenger. Let us be like the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. If not, then let us be like the students of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. If not, then let us be like the students and keep away from listening to music keep away from what disobeys Allah Azza wa Jal keep away from lahu al-hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran al-Kareem which is the, uh, the foolish talk the evil doings and I, as a believer I should always be looking into something that gets me closer to Allah I should be always looking into something that gets me closer to the love of Allah and His Messenger and I guarantee you music is not the way Music is not the way to get you closer to Allah Azza wa Jal, but on the contrary, music is only a way just to get you further away from Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. So for that, my brothers and sisters, with that conclusion, inshallah, I ask Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala to make us from those who listen and hear and act upon what they listen and hear, and I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to accept from us, and I ask Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala to keep us away from any evil saying or any evil talk or any evil action, and I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make uh, us all from the people who follow the Quran and Sunnah and enter the paradise with his beloved Prophet and Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If any brother would like to ask a question, please ask. I know it's a bit late and I'll start with the right corner there, then I'll come this way. Alaikum as How about the <laughs> Okay. May if he gets you closer to here, why not? No, it's still haram, it's still, it's still music. It is still that sound. So it's based on that sound, it is haram, Allahu alam. Is the hadith about making the music permissible, is that in uh, all of Mecca it's permissible? Or is that when you, for example, go to Jesus and play? The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam said aqwam. Aqwam means people. So okay. If music is playing in your house, or. Okay. This difference. Okay. No, I, this difference between me playing music knowing it's haram and me playing music and saying it's halal. Me playing music and knowing it's haram, I'm committing the sin of playing music. But me playing music, believing it's halal, I'm getting the sin of listening to music and I'm getting the sin of believing it's halal. No. 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 Look, as a Muslim, if there is a munkar, if there is something wrong, as a Muslim, if there is something wrong, if I see a munkar, I have to stop it with my hand if I can. If I can't, then with my tongue, then if I can't, then with... And at the same time, there's got to be hikmah, you know, how we deal with people. You know, there's got to be hikmah how we deal with people. Now, any other questions, inshallah, with the brothers here? No, mazal. Yeah, yeah, sure. Whistling, okay. Is whistling haram? Whistling is not haram, it's makruh. Whistling is not haram, it's makruh. And uh, the scholars say 
whistling is not only makru, it is one of the actions of Qawm Lut. Now these are one of the things that Qawm Lut used to have, is they used to whistle. And uh, also they say whistling is an, uh, I mean, I, 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 like this is a saying, okay? And whistling is an action of the shaitan. And that's why as a Muslim I should not whistle. Okay, I should not whistle and I should not engage myself into whistling. And also mentioning the topic that uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he only permitted clapping for women and takbir for men. So clapping for men is not permissible as Muslims. Oh, it's makru according to uh, a lot of the scholars. And for men to clap, that's not something that men should be doing. Men say takbir and women clap. No. Zikr what? Hello, we're going into a different topic. <laughs> okay, we're going into a different topic. Hello, we spoke about Duff. Duff is permissible. But the gatherings that people get together and do Zikr, it depends what they do. If they're doing something that's not from the Sunnah, then it's not right. And the Prophet, there's nothing that says the Prophet needs to get together and do Zikr together. You know? And some people over exaggerate. You know? It starts with one, one level and then. Phew, some people go into, you know, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, it's best always to just to follow the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and be on the safe side. Any other question, inshallah? Yes, brother. Okay, is a musical instrument? Then it's haram. And this is a good point, you know, about the mobile phones. A lot of people have music on their mobile phones as a ringing tone. That's haram. Okay, it's also haram to have the Quran al Karim as your um, how the tone as your ringing tone. It's haram to have music as your ringing tone because music is haram within itself. And it's also haram to have the Quran al-Kareem as your ringing tone because the Quran al-Kareem is not made. Okay, the Quran, okay, we're talking about that. Yeah. Okay, because the Quran al-Kareem is not made. The Quran al-Kareem is not made to be as a ringing tone. The Quran al-Kareem is made to be listened to and to be recited. Okay, we're talking about something that you could get you fix. <laughs> fix it. Old phone, get a new one. <laughs> <laughs> and a sheet uh, as a ringing tone. And a sheet is alright to get as a ringing tone. Even yani, anything beside the Quran al Karim, you know, as a respect to the Quran al Karim. No. No, and look. Yani, Anna, to me, the worst you could go to is deaf, okay? And yani, although I would I keep away from it, like, you know, the tambourines and that, although there's some scholars, you know, like Imam al Nawida who said it's okay, or some of them said it's makro. But that's a maximum you could go. But to me, I'll stick to deaf. Stick to deaf and Allah alam, you know? Stick to deaf, that's a maximum. Although, alhamdulillah, I'm the type that doesn't really listen to much, you know, <laughs> but a shade here and there, but يعني, you know, that's a maximum you should be at. يعني. Now, any other question, inshallah? Banging on tables, what singer banging on tables? <laughs> We're at school? Uh -huh. <laughs> and if, if it's going to come up with a musical, it's, it's like a drum, it's haram. If it's going to come up with a sound of a uh, drum, it's haram. And we should avoid those things, you know? Fadda. And uh, subhanAllah, you know, that's one of the big problems that we do have in our houses when our kids watch cartoons and the other. And it, look, we try our best, you know. We have to try our best. You know, we have to try our best. Now, inshallah, another question? So, inshallah, Monday, inshallah, you're going to have Sheikh Omar Banna who's going to give his lecture here. So, this Monday, inshallah, Omar Banna will be here. Jazakumullah khair for being here tonight. May Allah reward you. To listen to or download more Islamic lectures, please visit www.islamicmedia.com.au.